Hello, welcome to a new video. My name's Katie, I'm an artist and illustrator, and today I'm doing a roundup of the last two weeks of my daily drawing challenge. There's a full playlist which I'll link up in the cards which has other videos from the series, and today I'm going to be recapping weeks 12 and 13. If you've not seen one of these videos before, basically I'm doing a daily art challenge six days a week on my Instagram, and this is where I just go through what I've created, what I think about the piece, what my thoughts were behind them, and how I'm feeling about doing the challenge, because I'm keeping this up for 313 days. I think it ends in around June time, so it's kind of just a way for me to reflect and look back at what I've created and also where I want to take it. So let's jump right in. So for the beginning of week 12 and day 67, I actually did something in this sketchbook which I've not used before for this project. And this is just a really basic quick sketchbook that I've been doing some life drawing stuff in. Um, and I was just playing around and I wasn't expecting it to sort of be my daily art. But then I decided to try it again and I really like the result. So it looks like this. And this is based on some references from Emma Carlyle's Patreon. Basically she gave us like set times to draw each bird and then we moved along the branch and did them differently. So I did the top one first and it is quite realistic. Um, it's not very stylized at all. It's very like I'll see it and I draw it and I didn't really think much of it. And I don't really like the result, it's very boring. Um, I don't love the like pale blue pencil background. But then I did this and this was like a, this was separate from the Patreon time thing. This was just something I wanted to do afterwards because like I said, I wasn't really happy with this one. So I wanted to see how I could stylize it and create something which to me felt a bit nicer. And I really, I'm really pleased with the bottom one. That's definitely my favorite one. Um, I think I really like the boldness of it. One of the things which I dislike about my style is how I'm quite literal with it and I really want to try and be a bit more stylized and I think that's what the bottom one does more. And I think because of that there's just so much more character and life to the sketch. And like ironically this one took way less time than this one. Um, I tried to be fast on this one and I think that helps again with like the character of the birds. So as a spread, um, I like the way that they look together because obviously they work well together, but I'm, I'm much more happy, I'm much happier with this one. I think that one worked really well. And that was the beginning of week 12. For day 68, I did quite a big piece in the large sketchbook. And that is of this scene, which I found on Google Maps. And this was quite a big undertaking. Um, obviously it's a really big spread, but I really wanted to do something that was like really detailed and I really wanted to push myself. A lot of the landscapes that I usually do is very, very rural. There's always a lot of trees and I very rarely do many houses. And when I do, they're usually like standalone. So I wanted to try and do more of an urban scene in this one. And so I did a lot of the houses. I found this view on Google Maps by randomly dropping my pin. And I think it's along Route 66 and I just sort of like scrolled the camera a little bit and then I found this view and it's usually one that I would shy away from because there's so much detail but I wanted to try it out and I'm really pleased with the result. It kind of feels like a children's book spread um, which I really like and one of the things that Mitch said about this one was that there's a lot of movement and I definitely agree. I think like with the brush strokes that sort of all go one way, that definitely helps to create the movement. Um, this is obviously um, this is obviously a view from the road off of it. Um, and yeah, I definitely like the energy in this piece. I'm really pleased with how it came out. It could definitely have more details. I definitely got to a point where I was kind of done with it, but I really like the sign in the middle and a lot of the houses could do with more detail, I think, but I think this kind of balances the roughness, which I'm always striving for, with enough detail to um, have enough interest. So yeah, this one was a really big spread, um, a big undertaking. It did quite, it did take quite a long time, but um, I was really happy with the result. For day sixty nine, I again went with the like map theme, and uh, this time I used Map Crunch, which basically is where it randomly selects a place for you on Google Maps. 
And this time I did specify the country and I went with Finland and it took me to the scene and then I created this spread in my Italian sketchbook. I really love drawing houses and especially colourful ones so this was perfect and I just sort of um, moved my screen around to the different houses just to try and find different views and different colours and I think it works really well. I think this spread works because it's in panels and I've never drawn in panels before, this was my first time and I really love the way that it looks and it does influence me, which you'll see a little later on in doing another piece which I probably wouldn't have done had I not done this first. So I used a mix of Tombow's Neo Colour Pastels and Colouring Pencils again, which is like my golden trio of media. I really like how it's like a similar colour palette. Oh, obviously like you've got the greens and then this lovely like bluey lilac um, Tombow and I just think it really helps keep them really cohesive. Obviously it's the same landscape because they're all from the same town which helps but I'm really pleased with how this came out. I always enjoy drawing houses and this was no different. I really like the extra details that I added on with the Prismacolor pencils and it's quite messy, it's quite loose but I'm really pleased with how this came out and I definitely want to do more like this. For day 70 I was starting to lose a bit of my inspiration and motivation um, so I kind of defaulted back to my botanicals which I always enjoy drawing and I did this which is Deadly Nightshade. Halloween was coming up so I was seeing a lot of spooky things on my feed and I wanted to play into that so I decided to go with this one and for all these things I'll put links down below to the references but this one was a mix of a couple and I'm really pleased with how it came out it didn't do that well on social media um, compared to my other bits but I really like it. One of the things I usually do is go right to the edge so you can kind of see the pencil line and I usually paint right to the edge but I didn't on this one. I kept the really rough brush strokes and I really like that. I think that plays in really well as like a contrast between the really tight lines and like going around the edges with the paint in the middle and then the rough strokes at the edge. This one does did actually take quite a long time. The really precise ones usually do, even though like they look quite basic compared to the other ones. Um, but I'm pleased that I managed to do something that I was still happy with despite losing my motivation. For day 71, again I was back in the Italian sketchbook and like I said I was losing my motivation and it was no different on this day. So. As I said, I really enjoy drawing buildings and houses, so I decided to stay with the spooky theme and do some abandoned houses which I found online and created this full spread of different ones. And this was kind of similar to the Finland spread I did, but I timed these ones, so I only spent 10 minutes on each of the houses. So they are very loose and quick, but I really like how they look as a spread um, in, on one page. I, again, I like the colours that I use with the minimal greens and I like the texture that the Neo Colour pastels I used gave it, so like on the reef I think that works really well. And I also really like the shading on this one which I did with the Tombow marker. So these are really simple, quite basic, but a nice way to fill a spread. Um, it didn't take very long, obviously there's four houses so it took 40 minutes and quite a nice way to fill a spread without me thinking too much because I could just copy what I saw and I definitely feel like, and I'll talk about this more at the end, that I was losing my motivation in these two weeks and it didn't really come back, but I am pleased with this spread anyway. Day 72 was the last day of week 12 and I did this page. So basically I went back because I had an empty page which you'll have seen from last time when I did this one and I wanted to fill it up. So I did this little still life which is very muted in tone, very different colours than what I usually use and also a di different subject as well. And I really like it. I wasn't sure at first because it's so different but I love the looseness of it. It was very quick, I didn't spend that long on it and it was just a Nice way to end the week actually, considering I wasn't feeling good about my art and I was feeling uninspired. 
Um, I really like the muted tones. Like I say, that's not something I usually do and it's not usually a photo that I would choose to draw, but something about it I really liked and I really loved the result. I like the texture as well, so I used my Golden 3 um, mediums, so the Neo Color pastels, the color pencils and a bit of gouache. And then I also did some Tombows which I've been using lately. And so this green is one of the new Tombow brush pens I got. And then like all the extra little details, like the raspberries I did with Prismacolor pencils. So I don't like leaving empty pages in my sketchbooks, so I'm glad I went back and filled in the spread. Even though it doesn't really work together, I don't think that matters and it doesn't bother me that I don't work in order in the sketchbook, I don't mind that I'm going back and finding it. Yeah, I think this one worked well and was a nice way to end the week. So for week 13 and day 73, it was Halloween. So I obviously wanted to do something spooky and I did this tiny little piece just on loose scrap paper. And this is of the Sanderson Sisters Cottage from Hocus Pocus. It's pretty simple and basic. There's nothing that I would really take from it to carry on and, and do again. But I do like the colours. I like the framing of it, which was inspired by the image which I used, which again, I'll link below. And I really like the contrast between the bright, like neon colours, which I don't usually use against the brown trees in the foreground. So this one didn't take very long. I didn't have that long to do anything on that Sunday. Um, and like this one isn't anything to write home about, but it's a Halloween kind of inspired piece of art. And um, it, you know, it was a piece of daily art, which I'm glad about, but I was kind of hoping that with my day off on the Saturday, I would feel a bit more inspired and a bit more renewed which unfortunately I didn't. But you know, it's a daily art challenge, so I'm not going to create really exciting new things every day. I think I was just hoping to feel a little bit more inspired. So for day 74, I'm back in the Talon sketchbook and I was so surprised with how well this came out. This is the other spread I mentioned, which uses panels. And this uses a mix of references from a copyright free photo site, which I will link down below. And I love this one. I'm really pleased with the colors. It feels so autumnal and I love the warmth of it. I like the orange with the greens. I don't often draw people, so it was quite rare for me to actually use a person as like the main subject. And although like it's quite messy, there's a lot of like messy areas. I think it works really well as a spread. This one used only a little bit of gouache and a lot more Tombows and then the Neo Color pastels and colored pencils over the top. And I think that works really well. I think one of the things which I like the most about this is the layout. I really like how this kind of cuts in here. That wasn't really intentional. Um, it's just the way that I wanted a panel over here and I still wanted it to like spread over into this page. And it just worked really well with that subject because I, there was nothing in this corner. And so although that was unplanned, I think it worked really nicely. So like I was saying earlier, if I hadn't done the other spread in the panels, I wouldn't have thought to do this one in panels. And so I think that's the really good thing about the daily art challenge is that you pick up little things which you wouldn't normally do. And even if you're not consciously thinking about it, next time you do a piece of art, you might be like, or well, maybe I'll try that again with a different subject because I don't know what made me want to do like three little drawings for this one and why I decided to do it in panels, but it must have been something linked to that previous artwork because I'd never done it before. So yeah, I really like that. Um, it definitely shows me that I am learning and taking in new things and I must be like taking in new inspiration even if I'm not actively trying because although I don't feel like I'm improving or seeing like direct improvements in the artwork I'm doing, I can definitely see my thought process changing. And I think I talked about this in the last video as well, but I think like the more artwork I create, the more my brain sort of thinks in that way about creating artwork. So I think it's quite interesting and I'm definitely not explaining it very well. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see how I feel and how my artwork is at the end of it so I can reflect. Day 75, I had kept free to create my Christmas card design 
and I created two different paintings on that day and I wasn't happy with them at all. So here's one of them, this is a winter scene and that was supposed to be the background for the second piece I did which is these twigs and the little robin. So the idea for the Christmas card was to overlay this onto that, so I'd cut out this in Photoshop and I decided to do it separately because, you know, this one's really fiddly and detailed and I didn't want to lose any of this from this. So I was going to just do that in Photoshop. And I did. And I hated it. Um, I, it really wasn't the look I was going for. So although I quite like these individually, it definitely didn't work together and it didn't give me like that really warm feeling which I want when I do design my Christmas cards and I was designing them so late this year um, generally like you're doing them way in advance and I say every year I want to do that but I had such a busy October that I'd left it really late so I think the pressure definitely didn't help in the fact that I wanted to get it off to print like that day and obviously I couldn't because I don't want to send something to print which I'm not happy with I'm definitely a perfectionist but I know in my gut when something's not right and you'll see in the next day I'm really glad that I didn't just send this to print because it was something I'd created. Now I'm looking back on these I'm not that pleased with them, um, although I was at the time like this is very basic. I've definitely done nicer landscapes so these tick off like that day's piece of artwork but it's definitely not one that I'd want to put on display and I think I'll just file that away, um, not to look at it again and probably won't come back to it either. And that leads us on to day 76, which was the next day when I wanted to tackle my Christmas card design again. So this is the result of the Christmas card design. This is like the actual printed thing, so you can see the final result. And I'm so happy with this, I'm so glad that I did attempt to do it again. I love the colours, it kind of gives that warm cosy feeling that I wanted and I always want for my Christmas card designs. It feels really bright and colourful and nostalgic. Even though it's obviously a snowy cold winter scene it feels warming like you want to be there. And for this I did a lot of editing and a lot of additional like details in Procreate. So I added in this pink texture here which makes it feel like a sunset and added in like the clouds and the moon and then I added in all the details like for the windows and the fence and the lights that you can see at the front so there was a lot of extra stuff I added in after and I'll show you the original painting as well which was in the big sketchbook but I think those extra details definitely made it feel more Christmassy for me so although I really like the painting I did in the sketchbook and you'll see I've gone backwards again and, and did it on the other side of this spread. Although I know that I really liked how this came out, it wasn't there yet. Um, so it gave me like a good feeling that the other designs didn't, but it definitely needed a little bit of extra help to get it to where I wanted. So you'll see on the close-ups of the original painting, um, I definitely lost like a lot of the white detailing where I'd done the red first and then added on the white pencil on top. So that was the kind of thing I took it onto my iPad to improve and added like the extra white details around it and then all the extra little bits on top that make it feel lived in like the fencing and the lighting I think that really helps give life to the piece and make it kind of feel a bit more nostalgic because you can kind of picture yourself there um, like cozy inside having a cup of hot chocolate. So yeah although the Christmas card design this year took a little bit more work than I expected and wasn't as easy as I wanted. I'm I'm so pleased with how it came out and I think it's one of my favourite Christmas card designs that I've ever done. So definitely worth the effort. Day 77 is back in the small sketchbook and I created this page of different autumn foliage. So lots of berries and leaves and I found this image on Pinterest and then I went through and found the source which was a really lovely blog where um, the lady collects like different things from around when she goes on walks like from nature and stuff and I found her Instagram through that and it's like a gorgeous curation of like beautiful botanicals and so I just really wanted to draw them. This one was very simple, it's very easy, 
didn't require much thinking on my end. It was easy to just um, like basically see it, copy the layout and draw it in. And I'm really pleased with how it came out. I think it's very, very simple. And I wasn't sure at the time if it was finished. So I did all these extra ones at the bottom from different pictures. So these four were from one picture and that's how it was laid out. And then I wanted to fill in the gaps a little bit with other ones that she'd taken. And I wasn't sure whether to continue filling in around um, with more little bits like this tiny one here. Um, but I'm really glad I didn't. I think it works as it is and although like it is quite empty around it, I think it gives each piece space to breathe and it gives it room to stand on its own. So I think after like the Christmas cards, I wanted something safe and easy and this feels very in my comfort zone. So that's what I needed that day, and I am really pleased with this spread. Last but not least, at the end of week 13 was day 78, and a really big spread in this large sketchbook, and something which I've never done before. So I drew these animals, and this was done using references from Emma Carlyle's Patreon. So I'll leave the link down below and also write down the book where she found these references but very out of my comfort zone for me and I really focused on mark making here and I am really pleased with the results. Because they are timed um, I didn't use any paint I find that when I'm against the clock I tend to just reach for Neocolor pastels and Tombos and that was definitely the case here I always feel like there's not enough time to mix the paint so that's always interesting because I usually always put that down as a base layer first. But I really love how the texture came out, especially on like the fur. I think it works on all of these animals actually in terms of like using different colours and different shades to create the animal's body. I think my favourite is the howler monkey, um, just because I really like the way his fur looks. And also the axis deer because I really like the shape and like the way it looks like it's prancing onto the page. I also really like the different shades in that body, rather than just doing like a big blob of brown. I really like the way that works. And I think it's the same reason for the Howler Monkey, because it's not just one big blob. I think you can see like the hair, and I think the different colours definitely makes it feel really vibrant and colourful and reflects like the personality of the monkey. This was really fun. I definitely ended on something different, which I don't usually do at the end of the week. I usually go straight into my comfort zone like I did the day before. But I'm really glad I didn't. I'm glad I tried something new and it was quite successful. So I definitely want to do like more animals in the future. I think when I looked back on this spread, I was disappointed because I kind of feel like I want them really stylized. At the end of the drawing sessions with Emma Carlyle, a lot of the artists show what they've done. Um, so you can kind of compare and to me I really loved what everybody else had done so I didn't do it live I, I watched it back and, and tried it out but I really liked how stylized their pieces were like it was you could see their style you could see that they'd made it cartoony and when I looked at mine in comparison it felt very literal even though obviously it is stylized and there are clear marks there to me, I wanted it to be a bit more playful and a bit more like there was an actual style behind it. Even though, like now I look back, I can see like there's a style there, but I just don't think it's the style that I want yet. So I think, like I really want to try and take things less literally. If I see something, I can change like the proportions, I can change the way that I see it. And I think at the moment my head is just like, I've got to draw what I see in front of me. And obviously with a time challenge, I'll draw what comes to mind. But I think I really want to push myself in terms of stylizing things and making them a bit different and a bit more cartoony, something that you'd see in a children's book. But yeah, that's how I felt about this one. I'm still really pleased I did it and I'm pleased I pushed out of my comfort zone too. So that wraps up week 12 and 13. I definitely felt uninspired and unmotivated on these weeks. Certainly in comparison to like earlier weeks, I definitely felt like it was more of a struggle to create daily on these weeks. So I'm currently in week 14 as I'm filming this and I'm starting to feel a little bit of inspiration creeping back and like I'm going down the right path. 
But I think that's the thing with these daily challenges, like it will just ebb and flow. And this just was a, an ebb couple of weeks. Um, and one of the reasons why I wanted to have Saturdays off was just to try and like have a day where I don't have to draw. But I still think I get the benefits of daily drawing even with that day off. And I think I kind of expect myself on the Friday when I'm feeling tired and fed up that I have a day off and then Sunday I'll be like back to normal and I'll be really inspired just because I've had a day off. And obviously it doesn't work that way. Um, my brain doesn't work that way. And I doubt like even if I had a couple of weeks off, even if I took a break from drawing, I probably wouldn't come back feeling super inspired because I think I get inspired by creating the work. Like I'll do something like the panels and then I'll feel inspired the next time to do something with that or like with that technique or with that new medium. So I think there's like a bigger um, thing there that when you're feeling uninspired to not give up, um, to not stop and wait for it to come back because I don't think it will. I think we have to, as artists, really work for that inspiration. And so even though I was feeling a bit unmotivated on these weeks, I'm still really glad I pushed myself and created every day, even if I didn't want to. And I definitely feel like it is coming back now, so I'm really pleased to say that. I usually share my favourite at the end of the couple of weeks, and I think my favourites were probably the pumpkin spread or the spread with the first panels with the like different houses from Finland that I did from MapCrunch. I really like the way that one turned out. I'd love to know your favourites down below, and if you want to keep up to date with me um, with each piece daily, then do follow me on Instagram, I'm at katie underscore moody. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week with a new video. Have a good week, I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.